Picking up where we left off on the tour of the S series menu system, we are again focusing on just what's new, what's different about this, and we are currently in the gear menu option. So starting at the top under image quality, photo style settings, this is kind of cool actually. So you go into this and you can show or hide certain photo styles. So if you, let's say, never use, I don't know, portrait, you can turn that off. That way when you're scrolling through the photo styles, you don't have to scroll past the ones that you never ever use. So that's kind of neat in here. As we keep going down, you see there's my photo style, one, two, three, four. But then look at this. There are actually up to 10 custom photo styles. Um, the, what is it, from five onward has been disabled by default, but you can go in and turn those on so you can have up to 10 customized photo styles. I think that's kind of cool. You have under my photo style settings, this is new. You have the ability to add the sensitivity, so the ISO or the white and or the white balance setting into a custom profile. So you can build a custom look that includes white balance and or ISO in the custom settings. Pretty neat in there. So that's a, that's a new thing that we've got added in here. Um, and then load preset settings. Um, this has to do with when it loads the preset, whether you turn the camera on or off or goes to sleep on or off, whether it reloads that preset. Okay, ISO increments, nothing new in here. This is new, exposure offset adjustment. Love, love this. If you find whenever you're shooting in multimetering or spot metering or highlight weighted, whatever mode, that you're going, ooh, I tend to always underexpose by a third of a stop, or I always over, I always crank it up over a, a stop over. You can go in and say, whenever I'm using center weighted, always give me a, value has no effect on the actual exposure compensation value. Excellent. Um, a plus, what does that say, two six? I can't even read it. Two very small increments, four, six, five, six, six, one sixth stop increments, plus or minus one stop on there. So you can build that into the meter mode. That's kind of neat. I'm going to set that back to zero on there. So you can choose that for those different modes. Um, let's see here. Focus, shutter priority, nothing new there. This is all the same as it's always been. Manual focus guide. You can switch that between meters and feet. So this will actually show you. So let's do this. Let me go, because this is a new thing. I'll put it in feet. And let's look through the camera. There you go. Look down in the bottom right corner. You can see it's showing you your focus distance. Focus ring lock. You can disable the focus ring on there if you want to. Um, show or hide autofocus mode. So if you don't use all of these different autofocus modes, you can hide some of those. Just like with the color profiles, you can hide some of those. That's neat. So you can just kind of clean up your menus a little bit. Um, pinpoint and autofocus point scope. Nothing new in there. Uh, looped focus frame, this is all the same. Quick menu settings, a whole new quick menu. So you have control over the layout of this. Um, just to show you that new quick menu, let's go back to this view, pull that up. So what you're seeing on screen here is what you would see through the viewfinder, where you now still see your picture even as you run through these different quick menu settings. So it no longer takes over the entire screen, um, which is a nice new way of looking at things. Um, lock lever, I told you about the lock lever when we did the hardware review. This is where you control what gets locked or not locked when you lock that lock lever. Say that five times fast, it's like a limerick. So the lock lever is on the back of the camera, you flip that over, what does it lock? You can have it lock any or all of these five functions on there. Um, function button settings, so we've seen this before, you just have some different options in here, but controlling what all the different buttons do on here, very, very, very programmable, which is just awesome. The FN lever, that's the lever on the front. Um, mine is set to go to um, the silent mode, so whenever I flip that, the camera goes into full silent mode. Uh, let's see here, nothing new in here. Dial setting, illuminated buttons, so let's see here, this tells me what these are. So on mode is always on, so you can have the buttons always illuminated, illuminated only when you touch the button on the top of the camera, or just not have them illuminated at all, if that for some reason bugs you. But uh, mode two is going to be the most common. And video button record, you can turn that on or off in the back. Okay, auto review, constant preview, nothing new in here. Uh, photo grid line, framing outline, center marker, autofocus area display, all the same, all the same. Night mode, all still the same. Um, we're going to get to one really, really cool here in a moment here. These are all things we've seen before. Blinking highlight zebra pattern, HLG view assist. So if you're using the hybrid log gamma mode, um, I, not, I actually don't exactly know what it does to assist in your view. Sorry. Um, but if you're shooting hybrid log gamma, you can turn the view on or off. Sorry. Okay, two new ones here. Shear overlay and IS status scope. So the shear overlay allows you to display a previously taken photo on screen with opacity so that you can line up another shot. So imagine if you will, camera's on a tripod, you're shooting, I don't know, um, cameras, right? Let's say I'm gonna shoot, 
I'm going to do product photography of this camera and I want to have the camera with a variety of different lenses on it. I can, as I swap lenses, I want to make sure that the camera is in the exact same position as it was before. I can load up a previous photo with opacity and looking through the viewfinder or the LCD, I can realign that shot to make sure it's lined up perfectly. So that's kind of a neat function. The IS statoscope though, this is the fun one. So let's just turn it on here. This is the scope. As soon as I push the button down halfway, you see this little guy bouncing around to show you how stable you are. So I can, it's like a video game. Keep the dot within the circle. There you go. So now I'm holding it real steady. As I start to move the camera, you can see the stabilization dot all over the place. So one, it'll show you how steady you are or are not when you're holding that and trying to be real steady and you think you're rock solid, <laughs> but you're not. What it will also tell you, and I love this, if you put the camera on a tripod, you think, oh, it's on a tripod, it's stable. Not all tripods are made alike, right? And if you're doing a really long exposure, you want to make sure that that thing is super rock solid. So you could hook up a cable release, be able to push it halfway and see without touching the camera, see if it is actually moving. Know that you, maybe you decide you need to put a, a sandbag on your camera, you've, on your tripod. You've got a, maybe a not such a great tripod, it's a windy day. How much is it actually affecting the shot? You can now see that in there. Next up, lens focus resume and focus ring control. Okay, lens focus resume, so when you turn the camera off and back on, does it go back to the same position of focus? Here's one of the other really big ones. I know a lot of you are excited about. Focus ring control. Non-linear, which is how it is by default, or linear. When it's linear, you can set it and you can choose the rotation of angle, the focus ring rotation from 90 degrees up to 360. I'm not sure what the difference is between 360 and maximum. You can go even farther, don't know. But you can do a 360 degree and you can see the increments here down to 90. So what this means again, for those who may not be wondering why this is a big deal, for anyone who's been using these Lumix cameras with the Lumix lenses knows the focus ring on here is what we call focus by wire, like drive by wire. There's no mechanical gears connecting this ring to the actual lens moving inside. It's all done by software. What this gives me is the ability to do a ramp on here to speed things up and have the focus go faster, slower. When I'm shooting stills, especially useful. I do a quick flip like this and suddenly it goes from the front to rear. If I go slowly, it moves really slowly so I can do really precise focusing. Very, very useful. But there are times where you don't want that. There are times where you want that to be linear, meaning if I move it this much, whether I move it slowly or move it quickly, it moves the focus the exact same amount, the exact same from say, you know, one foot to five foot or whatever it might be. With linear control in the software, we now have that. So whatever you rotate it, it's always the exact same. Then with the ability to choose from 90 to 360 degree rotation, that means, let's say the camera's focused at the closest focusing distance, um, and I have it set to 90. From here, closest focusing, rotate it 90 degrees, now I've gone to the farthest distance. So from here to here, I've done a full focus rack, all the way up to 360, where it has to go all the way around, before it goes from nearest to farthest. So different levels of control, whether you're doing it by hand and you want that longer, smoother, or a faster control, or you're hooking it up to a follow focus system and you wanna have that most likely to be a full 360 rotation, but again, you can change it and speed it up. Super, super exciting, cool feature in there. All right, that's the last feature on that. So now we're gonna move into the last section on here, the wrench, the monkey wrench in there, and see what's hiding under that menu.